so let's carry on learning a bit more about instructions, shall we? So yesterday we were thinking about what makes a good set of instructions and we had six points. Today we're going to be thinking about more instructions and we're going to look at some and decide whether they're good or not. So by the end of today's lesson we will have followed some instructions. We're going to say why instructions are successful and then we're going to be able to spot ones that aren't very successful and perhaps even suggest how they could be made better. So before we get started, it's probably going to be a really good idea to pause the video and have a think about what were the six main features of instructions that we talked about yesterday. Remember, the ones we read yesterday, we gave a point per feature. So what were those six things? Pause the video and have a little bit of a think and you can have a chat with someone who's with you. So here they are. Let's see if you could remember them all. So we had a title. So we know what these instructions are. An introduction to the task, which is almost a bit persuasive to try and tell us that by the end of these instructions, you will have gingerbread men or a soup potato or whatever. A list of what you'll need so you can get it ready in advance. Bullet point or numbered steps so we can see it's all broken down step by step and we know which instructions we have to do in which order. Imperative verbs in command sentences so making sure it's nice and bossy. And some adverbs to tell us how to do it. So are we, when we're mixing, if we were baking, are we mixing quickly? Are we mixing slowly? That kind of thing. So your job for today is we are going to practice following some instructions. So in your home learning pack or in the files on Teams are two sets of instructions labelled Tuesday. And they are both explaining to you how to make an origami elf. So you can see in the pictures on this slide here that they've used some coloured paper to make their origami elf. But if you haven't got any, it doesn't matter. You can just use some scrap paper to do it. You just need a bit of paper to do it, really. And what you'll need to do is you'll need two bits of scrap paper and you'll need to follow both sets of instructions to see if you can make an origami elf. Now, what I want you to do when you're making them is think, have we got those six features in that we talked about yesterday? And actually, are these instructions easy to follow? So while you're making it, yes, you're going to get a cute origami elf at the end of it, hopefully. But I want you to be thinking all the way through, are these instructions actually any good? Are they easy to follow? Do I understand what I've got to do? Do I have to keep asking for help all the time? So at the end of the lesson, what I want you to be able to do is to tell me which instructions you thought were the best out of the two and which ones weren't very good at all. And I want you then to tell me the ones that were good, why were they good? And the ones that you thought could be better, can you make some suggestions of how they could be improved? Maybe they're missing some of the features from our list from yesterday. Maybe you've got some other suggestions. So by the end of the lesson, I want to know which ones are good, which ones you think could be better and why. OK. So just to remind you, then your task for today's English lesson is to follow the two sets of instructions to make two origami elves using some scrap paper. Then I want you to think, what did you think of these instructions? Are they easy to follow? Was one easier than the other? If it was good, tell me why it was good. If you thought it could be improved, I want you to give me some reasons and I would love for you to share them with me at the end in our catch up session. If you want to, you could send us some photos of you making the origami elves. Perhaps you could give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down to say what you think of the instructions as well. And our email address is on the slide. I hope you enjoy making these origami elves. I know when I've done it before, it can be a bit frustrating because sometimes instructions aren't always easy to follow. But I'm sure you're going to do a great job. And I'm looking forward to hearing what you think of the instructions.